Hi everybody and welcome to the 44th episode of Voice of Silence. I think today is one of the, uh, I would say, a milestone uh, episode because we have with us a psychologist and uh, I'm just very happy because uh, he specializes in men's mental health. And I think that's the need of the hour because although mental health is kind of, uh, you know, taking its course in our country, but I feel that uh, when it comes to the genders, which is men, women, and in general, I feel women are still speaking up a little more. I can actually give you a statistic on my own show I've had. He will be the ninth person out of 44. So that's a st uh, statistic in itself that men are not talking. And I think we need to because I think we are all living in our silos. But the point is, we are all living in our silos. So we need to learn all of us and which is why it's so important that we all talk, bring out our vulnerabilities, share openly and help each other. So on that note, I, with my team, uh, which is Pratik, Sobhagya, Deepa, Deepthi and Adi and we are sitting at Mulberry Times Cafe, I would like to welcome Arjun Gupta. Please can we give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming Arjun of today. Course. And uh, let's begin with a little introduction on what you do today. I think you did a pretty good job with that. Um, I am Arjun Gupta. I'm a counseling psychologist. I'm working currently with mind peers in a part time capacity. Okay. And I'm focusing more on men's mental health. I run some support circles for men on okay. a bi monthly basis, okay. wherein men can come in and speak about whatever is on their mind, talk about their vulnerabilities. We don't get a lot of men, honestly, but it's something that I do for them right now. So oh, those that's... are the things I do. That I did not know that you do that for men. That is amazing. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to promote this bit <laughs> a lot. Sure. I am. I am going to. So, um, okay. Arjun, let's, let's dig a little deeper into your background because mm. it, it's important not only for women but men. And now we'll talk in general but for everybody to understand where you come from. So, I understand when I was speaking to you that uh, you have been a brilliant student uh, in school and then you were preparing for your medical exams. Can you take us through that and also your family structure in general? Just if you can yeah, of course. So uh, I belong, I'm originally from Hisar, Haryana. It's uh, around three hours from Delhi. It's around, uh, I think it comes under a tier three city. So it has, it's sort of a semi-urban area. Um, you get a lot I'm, of things. I'm aware of Hisar. We have, we yeah, have you know, but I'm not sure everyone else. From, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah, get, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a, a great place to live in, honestly. Uh, and. Uh, uh, my dad's a surgeon. My mom was a lecturer in English at the time uh, when they had me. And uh, yeah, as you said, brilliant student academically. I uh, knew that I had to perform well. I was very competitive as well. So uh, I always tried to be the topper or uh, be the second or third best whenever I could. And I was uh, seeing my father doing surgeries, uh, just the way he talked about the human body and uh, how fascinated he was. I think that just pushed me towards uh, pursuing medical uh, as well because I shared that fascination with him, with biology, with the human body and everything that it holds. So, uh, yeah, I was preparing for my uh, bachelor's, uh, no, not bachelor's, I was preparing for the medical entrances and uh, supporting me through that were my two elder sisters. My eldest sister uh, became a doctor before I even got started. So the joke in our family was that the moment she became a doctor uh, after her MD, I got into the medical field and I uh, uh, started preparing for the PMT exam beforehand. And my elder younger <laughs> okay. sister was uh, uh, an engineer. She did her MBA from I am member. So I grew up with like three mothers in a way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How does that feel? How was it? Uh, growing up with I was women? I was very pampered as a child. Matlab, um, Everything that you could ask for, they would uh, get it for me and they just uh, watch every single move of mine, <laughs> uh, no matter what I did, no matter what I wanted to do. So it was like I was always under the Orwellian Radar. watch. Yeah, yeah, I was always being watched. So I had to be careful as well. So uh, yeah, it was fun, uh, a bit tough at times because uh, when you're being watched all the time, you can't really yeah. Yeah. Uh, be the mysterious kid because you're being watched all the time. But, uh, but does yeah. it get a little, um, I can say this because, uh, you know, I, I have, a, I mean, my husband, I have a son and like I was telling you earlier, my dog is also male dog. Now, uh, there are energies, mm. you know, feminine and masculine energies, which we all have. But when you are in a particular gender and you identify with it, then it gets more and right? So, sometimes I feel a little isolated or I would say cornered because I'm not understood. 
डिड यू एवर फील दैट ग्रोइंग अप दैट थोड़ा लाइक समटाइम्स आई ऑल्सो फील अ सेंस ऑफ सफोकेशन दैट यू नो और जस्ट बींग मिस अंडरस्टूड वॉज दैट समथिंग यू फेल्ट ग्रोइंग अप बींग द यंगेस्ट एक तो यंगेस्ट मतलब ओल्डेस्ट चाइल्ड होता है तब शायद डिफरेंट होता है डायनामिक डिड यू एवर फील दैट आई थिंक मिस अंडरस्टूड वुड बी अ बेटर वर्ड रादर दैन बींग सफोकेटेड लाइक Sometimes I do things that they'll be like, "Why are you doing this? Uh, hmm. What's making you do this?" And I, what hmm. happens? Okay, but then I see it. So um, yes, I did feel misunderstood at times, but thankfully, my sisters, my mother, they were understanding enough to also know that they might not understand every single thing I do. So uh, they were open to the idea that this child will be doing things that don't make we sense do, to they, us. They don't make sense, and. Okay, that's a later question, but well, the timing is still right. Do you think in a family then, because there is a bond by blood and by family, do you think that allows for more understanding and letting go yeah. than when you choose people in your life? So let's say you choose a girlfriend, you choose a wife, you mm. choose a friend who's a girl. Do you think वहाँ पर वो वाला understanding थोड़ा lacking होता है and there has to be more communication to understand? Do you think that is? I think um, that's the nature of relationships that we choose, right? Because the other person has already developed a lot of uh, their own psychological world, which mm. we are not aware of. Yeah. Whereas, when you grow up with your family as children, um, they shape you, yeah. and in a way, you shape them as well. Yes. So it is a bit more natural with them uh, to feel the inclination, to feel the attachment. If you go to uh, people who live in orphanages, they have those families. within uh, that place you know the people they grow up with yeah. the people yeah. they interacted with the people they developed with so um, yeah of course in the relationships that we choose the communication plays a huge role simply mm. because uh, mm. there is so much that is unsaid in those relationships whereas in family it is still known in a way because both the people were there when it was happening so it's a deeper bond in that sense that's very well uh, said and very well articulated we all know it but very well articulated so you feel closeness bond growing up together kind of adds up now whether or not it is a familial bond yeah. like often as you mention is excellent because uh, that means people who are so it's closeness yeah and having the same experiences together yeah. i mean i'm sure that's not the only thing but that is a very major that factor you yeah. know as opposed to two people coming together and at a certain age whatever already grown up that's when i think communication could be the bridge that is absolutely the bridge and it's the bridge to keep talking yeah. keep talking because you're coming with our own prejudices <laughs> without any fault of anybody right and okay. a lot of these prejudices are unconscious as well like we don't even know no we don't even know oh i agree <laughs> trust me i agree you know sometimes i felt ye kahan se nikal what is this <laughs> you, you know then of course when you work on yourself and your mind then you realize it's all okay everybody right. feels this thank you for that arjun and uh, okay So moving along, um, we are now looking at your journey. So before that, there was there any pressure ever? Because I tell you why, I was also a very good student, mm. but I was told even my parents are doctors. <laughs> you know the same thing. <laughs> We have too much in common. But I was the older kid, of course, younger brother. There was a lot of pressure. Yeah. So and I didn't know what I had to do. Though like in, that is the difference. You knew you wanted to be in the in medicine. but i did not but i was a good student and there was a lot of pressure but i knew that yahi karna hai like i have to obviously do well were you conscious or were you sub sub nahi unconsciously taking pressure and uh, thankfully no nahin? like my parents you wanted to. yeah i wanted to and my parents were clear over and over again that only do this if you want to because they were aware that this, there might be some pressure that i'm taking upon myself Uh, to become a doctor after mm. my uh, my dad and my sister that i might feel like i also have to become a doctor so they were repeatedly saying that if you are sure that you want to be a doctor and you want to be a doctor only, only then, then pursue this yeah that's there's important. no pressure for that yeah. and to the audience why i'm asking these questions is because there's a very thin line you know that sometimes very like in this case he just clarified that his parents actually spoke to him and said look don't take pressure so here maybe he was internally motivated on his own whereas a person like me why i mention myself and i'm sure a lot of others will understand this that uh, when you i may not have been internally motivated but maybe my external motivation was coming from my parents 
that you have to become a doctor there's a thin line you know of why yeah. although the results would have been the same if you look at arjun gupta's results and kanika kush's results oh great a students mm. you know but what is the motivation behind that's that's just important for the audience also to understand this is a good thing because you're building a story here we we'll, we we'll know in a bit okay let's move to the 12th standard you've cracked your medical yeah. examinations and just tell us what was going on at that time because well you aced it right what was going on at that time yeah so around uh, 2015 i appeared for aipmt as it was at the time and uh, i got around air 579 i think so that's my huge. <laughs> that's huge yeah so uh, i always had it fear that i want to go to this college called pgims rodak uh, it's where my dad studied where my sister studied so it was like a tradition of sorts that i was following that it's i'll be completely comfortable there uh, my home is just 90 minutes away uh, the doctors the professors there were juniors of my dad so it's like it's all it's a whole family business that's going on there so i shouldn't have any problems so i was very excited to join in and i got admitted i bought all the books on the first day itself and i couldn't wait for the first class to start but before uh, college officially got started um, somehow i don't know out of nowhere uh, i started getting very negative thoughts uh, like i became very pessimistic and cynical in how i thought about things so uh, when i used to think about the first day of college uh, what used to be very exciting what used to be very something i couldn't wait to come uh, i started dreading that uh mm-hmm. within a few days i was like okay so w- what what will happen even if it's the first day i'll forget the first day no matter what it is uh it's just going to be another slog for the next 5 years what's the point of becoming a doctor why do i even want to become a doctor it's all it was all very a lot of negative energy that i was uh Facebook. directing towards myself at mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. i was being mm-hmm. very negative towards myself i was putting myself down that it's not a great achievement that i made and I just couldn't stop that spiral because I didn't know that it was a spiral. I just felt like these are mm. my actual thoughts that are coming mm. up. Mm. And I just thought okay let's take this for a ride. Let's see where these thoughts go. Mm. And uh, uh they did not go to a nice place. So uh yeah, I went to college. I didn't feel like I belonged there. It was a very different environment than what I had in mind and um what I wanted it to be as well. What I needed at the time in mm. a way. and yeah of course first year students they go through a ragging period yeah. like teachers also know that they'll yeah. be ragged and i was like yeah ragging hogi i was expecting it and teachers were a bit rough at the time but i don't know why it even though i was expecting it i was ready for it i just didn't feel like i wanted to be a part of that environment like i didn't feel like i belonged there it was just completely uh like trying to fit a square thing in a circle hmm. like hmm. i didn't hmm. feel like i belong and it wasn't even something that was directed to me or something that was said to me or something like that it just didn't feel right and i have no idea why this was happening so i used to come back home every day i used to cry a lot i used to start fighting with my friends at the time who were doing their own college degrees and um, it was a very unfamiliar period in my life psychologically Hmm. because i did not understand what was happening i was just angry all the time i was not um, i didn't feel like doing anything i didn't hmm. feel like going to college i didn't feel like attending classes i didn't feel like uh, being a doctor uh, out of nowhere hmm. like within 2 months i was like hmm. i was on my dream path and suddenly i was like nah i don't want to do that i don't know if i want to do that hmm. so yeah it was a completely uh, unfamiliar experience those 2 months and how was your family reacting that time did they, were they aware number one did yeah. they see changes were you speaking to them there are too many questions you know mm-hmm. in the world of psychology each yeah. question means yeah. a lot but of course we have <laughs> a time limit therefore uh, i will tend to generalize a bit so uh, how was your family reacting uh, my family knew something was wrong mm-hmm. but they initially thought just like me that is just the first few days of college it's a new environment mm-hmm. maybe i'm struggling to fit in mm-hmm. maybe it's just you know it will go away in a week or two it didn't go away in a week or two it didn't go away in a few months either mm. like i had stopped going to college completely because i just didn't wow. feel like stepping out of my home mm. and uh, the friends that i had in the past uh, like childhood friends in school i was fighting with them all the time to the point that they stopped talking to me because they didn't want to get into a fight a pointless fight with me yeah right 
uh, that's when my parents first suggested arjun do you feel like you want to go to a psychiatrist do you think that will help uh, and i said like, okay yeah let's give it a go let's see what happens uh, nothing else is working out right now so let's see hmm. what this leads to and when we went to a psychiatrist uh, something i didn't know was that you're supposed to talk about your feelings yeah. uh, a psychiatrist doesn't know all these things by themselves they hmm. can't read minds surprising <laughs> <laughs> i i love the little sarcastic thing that you did thank you for saying that but you did you hear what he just said so and this is please this is a hard jod ke request to everybody out there who's struggling listen they are not they are not bhagwans they are human beings you will have to talk only then will they uh, you know figure out things they are trying to diagnose first you know what's going on so because abhi he will continue and he will say a certain sentence if he doesn't i remind him <laughs> but they are not magicians they are not gods uh, you'll have to work with them you know and open up please continue yeah so when i went for, uh, to the psychiatrist for the first time he said okay what do you feel i'm not going to tell you <laughs> i i am not to, to just give me the medicine and like figure it out and uh, then he thought that okay maybe i'm a bit uncomfortable with my mother there so he asked her to step out and he said okay it's just between the two of us tell me what you've been feeling i'll see if there's something i can do to help and i'm like no i won't tell you matlab i am not going to tell you aise nahi hota and i just stayed silent hmm. for the whole 30 40 minutes that he sat with me there i didn't say anything at all and uh, then he just uh, then he asked my mom that what what has been changing what what made you bring him here and he took some estimates and gave some medicines but then the stigma of medicines came in hmm. that uh, medicines will make me gain a lot of weight they'll make me very drowsy so i didn't take any medicines for the first few months either uh, i wasn't talking i wasn't uh, taking any medicines and i was still thinking that i'll get better somehow like some magic pill would come in and it'll make me happy um, and that was not how it was going to be ever so arjun if i may ask you uh, what was your age exactly that time and if you can if you can try and remember what was going on in your head at that time for the benefit of our viewers mm. what age were you and what what was stopping you from speaking if you can try yeah. and tell us so i was i had just turned 18 mm. so this happened between my 17 like like last one few months of being 17 and just turning 18 and when he asked me uh, what have you been feeling i couldn't find the words hmm. i did not have the words to okay. tell him okay. what i am feeling okay and i felt i don't feel like telling you because i don't feel like being vulnerable in front of you vulnerable yeah so that's a very ve- thank you so much yaar i just thank you so Perfect much for word. saying this arjun so see he used the word vulnerable okay uh, so this is a please guys and guys okay men he just used the word vulnerable and of course as the story goes along you know we'll understand but just being vulnerable in front of a professional yaar nahi bol rahe aapko yaar ja ke dindora pito wo chalo theek hai just to kind of give a statement maybe some people will get offended on this also but i'm just saying women like it right we do a lot of drama we'll cry we go to other women we'll talk you have no idea that's a form of therapy in a way the way women speak na so much kahi na kahi hamara therapy ho jata hai cheekne chillane mein men just are not vulnerable right mm. so you first of all thank you so much for accepting this i know you're a psychologist i know you studied it but that does not take away from the fact that you are a man and wo feelings hai so you openly saying it is a very you have no idea so thank you for that and dusra saying that i was 17 18 and feeling that didn't feel like speaking so ye hua what medicine nahi li for uh, the stigma like you're saying then what happened uh nothing happened i only got worse yeah. uh as it was supposed yeah. to be like yeah. if you don't open up if you don't take the medicines if you're doing nothing it'll keep getting worse and were you feeling physical uh, symptoms uh there weren't any physical symptoms i was just angry mm-hmm. at times mm-hmm. um i was uh, hurting myself at times hurting in what sense um like i can't put the exact words there okay. but the, okay. uh okay. i can't share the methods okay. ethicals okay. yes okay. uh yeah but uh, i was harming myself at okay. the time and i had constant thoughts of suicide uh because it felt like this like i was being a burden to my family at the time as well right because i was just staying at home and my parents were worried uh what's going to happen to him what's going to be his future and i'm not getting better either so thoughts of suicide would come in 
and that's how my 2016 went when I was just uh, around just turned 19 like that's how it was uh, that's when my parents suggested okay let's try a different city let's mm. uh, see if a new city will be better for you so we thought maybe a bigger city a better college a more different approach to teaching would be better so I appeared for uh, NEET it became NEET in 2016 and I cracked it again and I got uh, admission in Bangalore Medical College uh, so I thought, okay, now it's done. Uh, new city, new people, new place. I can get better here. So no worries now. Uh, surprise, surprise, it didn't work. Uh, so uh, I was there. I was again in the classes. The teachers were very nice. The classmates were very nice. They were all very understanding of why I had dropped a year, what I was going through right now. They were willing to help me out with my practicals, with my classes, with notes, with everything. And I still felt the same. Mm -hmm. I still felt like harming myself. I still felt like dying. I still felt like I was being a burden to everybody. And um, yeah, like my parents had to take turns uh, at that time to stay with me, to ensure I didn't do anything my, to myself yeah. uh, in 2016. So they used to fly into Bangalore one by one, take turns at staying with me. Uh, or sometimes I'd go back to uh, Hisar to ensure that I'm safe, like physically safe at the time. And uh, yeah, 2016 was a terrible year in that sense. And that's when we started uh, treatment with in Bangalore. We, okay, let's try different doctors here. And again, it was the same issues. They used to talk to me, tell us what's wrong, tell us what you're going through, tell us what you're feeling. I won't say anything. I don't want to say anything. I was still scared of saying anything. I was still scared of opening up and telling them what I'm feeling, what I'm experiencing. Um, I felt like they'd judge me they'd ridicule me they'd uh, like they're professionals but i still felt that mm. that mm. they'd still whisper about me and you know just uh, spread rumors around it was all mm. very um all the reasons to stay quiet mm. at the time mm. and uh, yeah that's how 2016 went uh, and that's when finally doctors recommended that okay no medicines are working Therapy, he's not opening up in therapy either, so we can't tell much, do much in therapy either. And that's when they recommended electroconvulsive therapy. Uh, mm. So 12 rounds of electroconvulsive therapy. That's, that was something like, uh, I think they called it resistant um, treatment, resistant depression treatment. If it's resistant to all forms of treatment, mm. then you can mm. try ECT. So we did 12 rounds of ECT. Um, in the beginning of 2017 mm. and uh, maybe that was what helped me because eventually um, here I am today right a uh, few things happened in the middle we'll discuss them um, I'm sure but yes that was how th that whole 18 month period was from 2015 to 2017. First of all I'm just uh, I mean my heart goes out to anybody actually and now that of course you're my speaker and I'm not I'm not saying sorry in a way that in sympathy just sorry that you had to go through that mm -hmm. although all of us uh, do go through our dark phases but my heart still goes out to people because it's not easy it's part of life and all that is great but it is still tough so to a little child like 17 18 yaar, kya age hota hai? but uh, I, we also know that these kind of things can hit at any time that also we are aware of, yeah. right? And that's why you are here. So first of, first of all, A, I'm glad you came out of it, but I'm also feeling a little sorry in terms of sad that you had to go through, that your family had to go through and you know, uh, but well, we did move on. My question to you before we move on to the uh, to 2017, Jan, uh, is that do you now rem remember with the ECT happening and with your parents doing to and for you going to tell them I'm okay, was time pe kuch awaz sun rahi thi kahi par like was it coming to the surface that okay what's like was there conflict that, nah. there was no conflict there was no conflict like the darkness was winning matlab if it is if we are yeah, making yeah. it a conflict yeah. between light and darkness Dark. like it life and death death was like absolutely down. trouncing life completely matlab, oh, man. no 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 hope at all <laughs> You know, everybody, uh, this is, I mean, this is maybe Arjun's quality, but it is a very, it's its a little bit of a, I, I like how you're making it light, you know, but I can really feel it still. So, man, that would have been like, you know, and I'm saying it, why? Because maybe I have experienced few things like this as well. 
therefore i kind of relate with it but i'm just glad <laughs> that we did move on so okay continuing now ecd ho gaya uh, you know all this is going on we've hit 2017 what changed in that year what happened in that year because you in february specifically yeah. before the, what led to february and what changed hmm. so uh, around february my ect sessions had ended and i was back in hisar my future was up in the air and um, it was like i was on medications uh, but they weren't really having a lot of effect and uh, uh, like 13 february was uh, my last suicide attempt theek hai and honestly it was a terrible suicide attempt matlab in terms of competence of suicide it was <laughs> <laughs> it was a horrible attempt matlab <laughs> matlab an attempt so bad that it made me feel like okay i am not built for this uh, i can't do this so uh yeah uh, it was a terrible terrible attempt at dying and that's when i thought ki okay uh, uh ye to nahi ho raha mere se clearly as a third time we fail ho gaye to kya hi karoge aap thank god <laughs> <laughs> okay third yeah. time lucky hota hai usually but like wo bhi nahi hua so uh Yeah, so I thought, ki, okay, let's let's see if we can get better. Thirteenth uh, ko, I decided, ki, let's see if I can get better. Fourteenth uh, ko, I just wrote this huge uh, Facebook post about how uh, I'm going through this. Uh, I'm being told that I have clinical depression, although I don't believe it because um, throughout this time, I felt like ladkon ko nahi hoti depression. It's not something that happens to guys. It's it's something to happens to weak men at best. and i'm not weak i'm very strong matlab mere ko to nahi ho sakti right um so i wow. i put it in these words ki yeah. i'm being told i have clinical depression hmm. uh, and i need your support i need your help i don't need those phrases that snap out of it get over it get a life i don't need to hear that i need genuine actual support and that was like a desperate attempt for help matlab that was pretty much it uh, thank you so much for saying this yeah <laughs> thank you so yeah. much for saying this and <laughs> yeah sorry and but you are um, i'll take a moment here i'm sorry arjun but uh, yaar ye ye strength hai ye hai strength not the other thing please and first up this is a sincere request i hope this is reaching somebody who is uh, maybe undergoing clinical depression right now guys it's it's okay I mean, heart tootta hai, pair tootta hai, वो भी हो सकता है number one, number two, please, please, if anybody is even contemplating anything like this, listen to him, and the way he laughed about it, please laugh about it and say what the hell is going on, yeah, please, please, okay, please, it's a request. And third, did you just see what he said? That मुझे लगा कि clinical depression ये तो weak आदमियों को होता है. What is weak? What is strong? Honestly speaking. and he said get a life but in the real sense let's get a life and in a good way in a good way you know let's choose life number 1 and number 2 strength weakness i feel are just uh, phases koi continuously strong nahi hota koi continuously weak nahi hota ye mera khud ka contribution hai and please you're free you are a psychologist i'm not please cut me from saying something weird but this is what i feel what is strong what is weak we are all humans yaar aapko weak feel ho raha jao na yaar मतलब डॉक्टर के पास तो हम पहुंच जाते हैं ना बात बात पे बात बात पे पचास बार फीवर होगा दैट टाइम नो बडी जजिंग कि तुम्हें कितना फीवर होता है यार कितनी बार डॉक्टर के पास जाते हो दैट नो बडी सेइंग भैया मेरे को अगर ठीक नहीं लग रहा है मैं सौ बार जाऊंगी यार सौ बार जाऊंगी मैं एंड दैट्स माई रिक्वेस्ट टू एवरीबडी यू नो लाइक ही डेड एनी वॉट अ ब्यूटिफुल सेंटेंस लेट्स गेट बेटर आई थिंक कैन आई प्लीज अपलॉज अपलॉज यू लेट्स गेट बेटर सो Thank God, Hanji. Fir batao, please, aage. Ha, huh, and uh, I was generally overwhelmed by the response I got on that Facebook post because I had made a similar post on Instagram a few days back before my attempt, and that didn't get anything. I mean, us pe kuch kuch uh, no attention that it got. Um, so I was not expecting anything from Facebook, but it was just like putting it out there. I just wanted yeah, to like yeah, get yeah. it out there, uh, and. Uh, Yeah, the response from that was amazing. Like my teachers, my seniors from school, my juniors, everyone was like, uh, "It's okay, you'll get through this. We know you. We know who you are. This is not who you actually are. You, you're brave enough." Uh, some of them told me that I should visit a tantric, so I just ignored.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which but, is okay. But I was like, at yeah. that point, I was okay. Like, yeah, I know you're yeah. coming from a place Good where place. you wish to yeah. help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Absolutely. I was like, yeah. Matlab, six months ago, if I had heard, heard that, I would have been uh, infuriated yeah. hearing that. Yeah. But in that moment, I was like, hai, this is your way of trying to help me help. out. So I'll take it. And uh, yeah, that's when I decided that, okay, let's, uh, let's try and open up with a doctor. Let's see if that actually helps because they've been telling me it works. And I haven't been doing it for 18 months. So let's see if I can do it. And uh, that's when we changed psychiatrists again. We went to a different one. Um, I started therapy. Uh, and the difference was I was opening up, actually opening, trying to open up yeah. at least. Yeah. Like I yeah. was actually trying to find the words about what I was going through. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, that's what put me on the right track after that. A few days later, a friend suggested that if, you are, if you're feeling so many things and you don't know who to tell it to, why don't you start writing a blog? And I, damn, that is a good idea. Why did I not have that? But I felt a bit bad that I didn't have such a good idea. So I started writing a blog as well. Um, and I just let everything out in that blog. Um, I was uh, regular with my medicines. I was regular with my therapy, with my therapy homework. And uh, like within a few months, I was so much better. Four to five months. <laughs> and good. Because uh, when a medicine wasn't working with this new psychiatrist, I tell them that this isn't hmm. working. This didn't help. Hmm. Like in these two weeks, I didn't feel any better. So they changed it. And they were like, okay, try this one. And then they'd ask me the same thing two weeks later as well. So it was like, I was actually, it's, it was a communication process, yeah. right? Yeah. And I was actually communicating this yeah. time around. They didn't have to rely on what my parents were telling them hmm. or what I felt, or it felt like I was feeling. Yeah. I was actually telling them my honest truth. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that genuinely uh, accelerated the process a lot more. And I have a question here. It just occurred to me. Do you think also kabhi ye hota hai that uh, when uh, we are called patients in this case only, right? When a patient goes to a psychiatrist or a therapist for that matter, do you think in India especially, uh, we also have the fear that, I don't know, am I using the right words? Like, we are, are we trying to please the psychiatrist also sometimes? That am I using the right word by saying I'm sad, but actually sadness nahi feel ho Do you think that's also a barrier kind of? Hmm. Do you think? Was it there in your case when you finally opened up? Did you just start talking? <clears throat> without feeling ki inko samaj aara hai, nahi mein pehle bol to dhuya raha hai, feeling aara hai. I think you make a really good point about the role language plays Haan. in this. Uh, I was lucky because I, I'm pretty good at English myself yeah, and yeah. so was my psychiatrist. But what about, yeah. That, yeah, that's but who, the people, those are, yeah. But the people who struggle with English, huh. with the right words or with the right words in... Uh, articulation. Uh, articulation. Huh. That it, can be a big challenge. It can be? It absolutely can. For the patient? For the patient and for the, the psychiatrist, the healing process will be Will be difficult. a little longer maybe. And the primary person who's suffering because of that will be the patient in that case. So in this case, mein kya, at least can we tell the patients uh, to still have faith because the psychiatrist will get, like psychiatrists I'm assuming, hmm. are trained uh, with body language cues and yaar, obviously, if I have Spanish speaking, it will be difficult. But yaar, Hindi, English is coming. And kuch bhi karke, you think that chalo, do session lagne te, to char lag jayenge. Can we then ask the patients to have faith yeah. that yaar, please tum, don't get language to be a barrier. Please, aap baat karte raho, Hindi mein tuti hui, Haryanmi mein baat karna hai, baat karo. You think that's a good message to yeah, give yeah, up? Don't give up, yaar, just absolutely. because of language is semantics. Uh, they, uh, the psychiatrist start asking different questions in that case. If the person is struggling exactly. to uh, put the right yeah. words, emotions yeah. agar samaj mein nahi aate, they ask like, what do you feel like? How do you feel like? So they start using phrases like, Man is sitting in the mind, you feel like you feel Exactly, exactly. So those, those, they become idioms yes. in a way that yes. express what you're feeling. Yes. And it's about getting the message across. Yeah, that's the, the whole point. That yeah. foundation is at least laid down and I'm certain that the psychiatrist also doesn't move ahead. Yeah. When I say psychiatrist, please everybody, I'm talking about mental health practitioners, like a general body. Uh, not just psychiatrists, I mean, they involve pretty much everybody, yeah. right? So then what happens is a foundation banna start hota hai, but nobody is going to move ahead immediately. They will still ensure. They will ask you questions back. Achha, aapko betha betha lagta hai. Aisa betha hua lagta hai ki waisa betha hua lagta hai. That they'll, they'll ensure that is this what it is and then they'll move on. You know, of course, they have to be worth their salt. I mean, not everybody is. Yeah. So, wo due diligence karni hai as patients or maybe your family can. But that's... An assumption you can kind of, you know, go ahead with. So you said that that was your new birth. Hmm. 
how did that feel and after and when you look back like ek hota hai na turning point like you know you've crossed over wo kya tha i cried like i hadn't cried for 18 months matlab i was feeling all those things but i hadn't cried at all i felt like crying many times but uh, matlab aansu hi nahi nikalte the yeah, it didn't come out yeah. any time and uh, i think it was in the second or third month of the treatment happening that one night i just like shuru ho gaya shuru nikle the rest it doesn't stop it does and sometimes you get scared <laughs> exactly it's happened and, it's happened and like my uh, my parents were there and my uh, sister was there as well and well, चलो रो रहा है अच्छी बात हाँ बिल्कुल रो रहा है कोई बात मतलब दे आल्सो हर्ट दिस बट इट्स अ गुड साइड दैट आई एम आई एम क्राइंग अगेन एंड आई एम एक्चुअली बिकॉज़ क्लिटिकल डिप्रेशन इज़ नॉट जस्ट सैडनेस और फीलिंग लो इट्स नम्बनेस एब्सोल्यूट कंप्लीट नम्बनेस यू डोंट फील एनीथिंग यू डोंट फील गुड यू डोंट फील बैड यू जस्ट कंप्लीटली नम्ब एंड वेन यू आर क्राइंग यू फील सैड Yes, so the feelings that. have entered. I can I can feel sad if I need to. I am okay with that, but I I'm happy to feel something. So that's good. So good to know this. Yeah, <laughs> so good to know this. Okay. All right. So I think that pretty much sums the history. Apka and then you chose psychology. Yes. So that was when I had a question on my mind. What do I do now? So I have two gap years already on my uh, CV. So do I? Go into MBBS again because MBBS is a very rigorous course as yeah. it is, like right? uh, five and a half years, and then you do your MD, uh, you do super <laughs> specialty, but uh, like ten years, that's yeah. gone. So I had to make a very difficult decision. He uh, okay, we need to. I was fragile as well at the time, like my mental health was pretty fragile. Yeah, I I wasn't sure if I'd be able to take the pressure yeah. of an MBBS course. So that's when I decided, he okay, uh, we'll have to put this dream on hold of becoming a doctor. and go for something a bit more relaxed and that's when i decided to pursue psychology from du um i got it on the last seat luckily and uh, yeah i've been studying psychology ever since and you decided to speak about men's mental health yeah was that why that the answer is obvious but still would like to hear from your words um so it wasn't very obvious to me uh, right away Uh, like in my bachelor's, I didn't really have it in mind that I'm going to talk about men's mental health specifically, but uh, that's when I came upon these suicide statistics, uh, global suicide statistics, and I found like 80 percent of all suicides are men, 70 to 80 percent of all suicides, and I said like, I could have been just one of these numbers a few years back, and uh, where are all these men going? Because I was also talking to psychiatrists, psychologists at the time, and you sit in the waiting room; it's mostly women. sitting there there's very few yes. guys who actually visit mental health professionals mm-hmm. and i wanted to understand where is this discrepancy coming from like men are dying by suicide in overwhelming numbers yeah but they're also not very commonly visiting mental health professionals mm. so i wanted to understand that discrepancy mm. and that's when i started working on men's mental health uh, that's what my thesis work was in my bachelor's mm. the, what is exactly going on here mm. and uh, yeah uh, that's what brought me to men's mental health i learned a lot of things about uh, honestly men as well about myself as well and i learned a lot of things about uh, the way gender plays a lo- role in mm. these health outcomes yeah so i have just been trying to do my effort in sort of fixing that in Good. a way at least no that's amazing yeah. that is and uh, That's what I said. One of the reasons, Arjun, that you're here is because I incidentally came upon your profile the other day because I am also in that space. Of course, I'm not a psychologist, but I'm very, very interested. It's a tiny bit that I do, so I follow people. And your approach, the way it was, you know, it is very logical. It is backed with uh, with uh, statistics. It's backed with substance. It's backed with proof, and it's very to the point. Yet, it has heart. Mm. I think which is required. Yes, it's clinical, but it is still human beings. वो जब एड होता है देन इट काइंड ऑफ यू नो इट्स अ स्टोरी देन वेरी इजीली कंज्यूमेबल एंड रिलेटेबल सो आई आई बीन सीइंग एंड आई वाज लाइक वी नीड दिस पीपल प्लीज यू नो बिकॉज़ लेट्स फेस इट यार मैं अभी देख लो इस कमरे के अंदर देयर इज ओनली वन वुमन द रेस्ट आर ऑल मेन नाउ वी हैव टू ऑल टॉक टू ईच अदर एंड यू नो वी ऑल हैव टू कम टुगेदर सो दिस डिस्क्रिपेंसी द गैप दैट यू टॉकिंग अबाउट Why are people not talking about this? Is my question. So thank God that at least you are doing that. 
but uh, now i think you know usually with my speakers is when i this is pretty much where we end and there's a there's a message that goes out but like i said main aapka pura istemal karungi aapke knowledge ka on my show so that yaar yeah, i'm also a medium no and uh, jokes apart i really want your message to kind of go out i have a few questions for you as a person a layman asking a psychologist you know if anybody out there can kind of take away from here okay so the first question is how common is clinical depression in india chalo statistical question pooch liya uh, and only if you have answers i mean i'm I... not sure i have the exact numbers about how uh, often the cases happen i can tell you gender uh, uh, that'll be amazing division, if that helps yes so uh, women get diagnosed with clinical depression twice as often as men oh uh, yeah okay i can tell you that oh yeah though so that's interesting and are all of them are all of them dealing with it uh, uh, professionally or they just getting over yeah, it yeah so this is uh, from the data of people who deal with it professionally people who don't come to professionals wo pata hi nahi hai hame wo pata nahi chalta hame so this is up in the air then nahi right? in a way <laughs> so you are this is then up in the air it's like kitne crimes uh, uh, report only the reported hai. ones get Shoot. noticed so then then we can't really base anything there's, there's on, a lot of error that is there, there, is, there is there is please don't base this on anything okay yeah. so we can kind of not take that question very seriously okay uh, how do you uh, how when i say how do you how does a person themselves detect that okay something's up i may be suffering from maybe depression or clinical depression kya hai what are the first symptoms you know uh the first symptoms people usually notice or should be noticing are changes in their sleep changes in their eating patterns or uh, changes in their uh, productivity stuff like that like okay. uh, people aren't being as functional as they used to be like the things that seem to be very easy very normal very uh, rudimentary hmm. they are becoming more difficult day by day and it's becoming difficult to uh, be as functional as you used to be and does this have a time span over which they can or uh, usually if it's lasted for 2 months or 2 months yeah it's that, a good then, idea then to, it's it, a good idea to, to uh, visit a to visit a mental health professional that, okay yeah. and uh, very basic question arjun but who do you see counsel from immediately let's say i'm feeling it who's the first person a counselor a psychologist a psychiatrist who do we go to um people uh, there's a difference in who people usually go to hmm. and who people can go to as yeah. well people usually end up going straight to the psychiatrist ha yeah. uh, the psychiatrist is the first uh, person people go to with these issues and before that comes the general physician hmm. because a lot of these issues come out in the form of uh, fevers yeah. or pain yeah. that is unexplained or just general lethargy so they end up with uh, general physicians uh, then after that comes psychiatrist that people are more comfortable because they are the most accessible uh, mental health professionals out there psychiatrists are more accessible than psychologists and then people reach out to counselors or psychologists okay. um the way i see it if counseling if psychological services were more affordable if they were more accessible to people uh, they would be the first line of defense in that case and i agree with you yeah and i agree with you i have just started it just been i it just been about 2 3 months of starting like professionally i gave it 2 years before i began this but i want to be that person yeah i want to and i truly want to be that person that if you are in trouble yaar and you want to talk to me na to paise beech mein nahi aayenge yaar pehle baat kar lo aap pehle baat kar lo pehle baat kar lo baad mein discuss karenge let's be those people first you know like otherwise wohi ho raha hai yaar 70 80% na so i i agree with you it needs to be affordable and like first line kaun jao seedha baat pehle nahi hota tha kya ghar pe joint family mein nahi hota tha yaar koi na koi counselor hi to hote the hamare abhi nuclear ka bhi isolation hota ja raha hai so it's becoming a little lopsided i feel what happens when you ignore these symptoms we know from your <laughs> we know <laughs> this happens <laughs> we know but if you were to like uh, i mean physically uh, you spoke about the symptoms yes but let's say ignore karte gaye 6 mahine ho gaye ek saal ho gaya does it come out through violence does it come out in aggression yeah does it come out in anger random unexplained <clears throat> anger uh carelessness recklessness what else yeah disease uh, disease, disease? Psychos- psychosomatic yeah. psychosomatic diseases are very very common especially in tier 3 cities in india matlab they will have children who are coming up with uh, in catatonic states 
and the parents feel like we can't explain what is happening. What state did you? Uh, sorry, catatonic state where they uh, their body is making involuntary movements. Okay. Sort of that. Okay. Like, uh, like seizures. Yeah. Okay. Sort of like seizures, but the ch child is in control. Like. Uh, okay. They're conscious as well, Yet. but they're also making uncontrollable body movements. Hmm. Um, and the parents are very afraid of what's happening to them. Hmm. Um, and we later find out that there was something, a very huge stressor that was playing on this uh, child's mind that they couldn't express to anybody, which, is, uh, which was causing this. Um, and because it is, and this used to happen in the 1920s as well across the world. Hmm. But since then, the world has gotten a lot, especially the Western world, has yeah. gotten a lot more accepting to mental health issues yeah. since the world was. So the somatoform, these are called somatoform disorders, have reduced a lot there. Because people, when they're feeling a bit stressed, uh, very, very stressed out, they actually yeah. end up seeking the services. Here, uh, in rural areas, we just keep it inside till the form it takes the form of a physical illness. Um, and let me make it worse. Uh, people end up going to faith healers in this case because yeah. they feel like yeah. this is uh, yeah. because it seems like something that's uh, it very visibly feels like they've been yeah. possessed yeah. yeah like you just see it and if it feels like they've been possessed uh, which is uh, actually a form of a somatoform disorder yeah. so that happens anger and aggression happens more instances of uh, outbursts more uh, violence all these things happen if you ignore them over and over again and keep them within yourself. This is a, a little general statement, but do you think that in India, see in India anyways, we are far behind. You just mentioned the West and I agree with you also. In fact, the study is also outside of India. The studies are also less than to kind of you know, relate with. But do you think in India and especially men, uh, uh, need to be more aware of this? Because we have spoken when I still am asking you, or is it like, obviously women also need to, but like you said, anger and aggression. Women typically, typically will not show that huge anger and aggression which we are speaking about. So what we just, what I just asked you, do you think men need to be even more aware? Yeah, uh, uh, and it's not just the anger and aggression, it's that what happens when you're not aware of this, you just uh, keep this within yourself because it feels like it's part of being human. Hmm. Uh, it just feels like it's human suffering and people suffer, men suffer, Haan. you have to do it. Uh, it's like a rite of passage uh, to becoming a man. To manhood. To manhood. To manhood, right? yeah. Uh, the thing is, a lot of suffering can be avoided. Yes. And it should be avoided. Yeah. Like you don't have to meaninglessly suffer as well. So, uh, yes, we need to be more aware. We also need to be less okay with suffering uh, in the first place. Uh, Pata Arjun, your tagline is voice of silence. Ka. <laughs> this is what I introduce every time with paying respect to pain. That's my tagline. That one suffering hai which can't be avoided. One suffering is, why are you doing this? Which is why I also started to talk about it. Please just talk, talk. Yeah. So, but clinically speaking and medically speaking, you're saying just don't suffer so much. Yeah, uh, and, it, and it feels like it's uh, those the choices that are being made, this, these suffering choices, these hard choices that are being made, it's always with the long term in mind that we will get something in the hair. What is it? What is it? What is it? It's not a guarantee. Hai and uh, you don't actually know whether you will get the returns of this pointless suffering as well. Exactly. You'll end up suffering with no point in the first place. So it's always something I suggest. Yes, life is a bit of suffering. You will suffer a bit. You have to get through a bit of suffering. But if you can choose, don't suffer. <laughs> uh, flourish instead yeah, of Yeah, thrive. Yeah, try, thrive. Try to thrive. Why struggle? Thrive like struggle. Because there are people involved around you. You're not yes. living in a silo. That yes. and other thing that I wanted to ask you was a lot the people that I've spoken to. And I, I know this from personal quarters. Somehow something else is priority. Like it's like karenge. It's the least priority. Mm. Do you want to say something that will least priority as a hobby hoga for the nobad? Kiye baki sari cheese khatami ho jayengi. Please say something about this in your way, like as a psychologist. I love she's right on the market. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, uh, I can't really make you prioritize something uh, that you aren't willing to prioritize, right? Yeah. Uh, that was something I did as well. Matlab, uh, hai, padh lo pehle, uske baad ye sab ho jayega. Ye kar lo pehle, uske baad ye sab yeah. ho jayega. Ye kar lo, uske baad ho jayega. Wo kabhi baad mein aata hi nahi. <laughs> and fir. Fir, uh, wohi hai. I mean, yeah. 
I know you're happy doing what you are, uh, Arjun. But see, you had like there was medicine in mind. You did too. So, it was gone. Time, time. So, it was gone. Finally, of course, you're doing what you're doing. But that does not mean that everybody has to. Maybe, maybe you had to become a psychologist number one. So, but that's not that's not how you live. Like yeah. you know, when you're going, why go through it in the first place? Why go through it? And especially when you have help at hand, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. If somebody is undergoing depression right now, what are the first three things you will tell that person? The first most important thing is uh, know that it's an illness. It's not something that's wrong with you. Yeah. It's not a character deficit. It's not a moral failing. It's not a weak personality that you have. It's an illness that you have right now. Secondly, I'd suggest accept that it is an illness. It's okay. You can get through an illness just as you can get through another illness, just of any other kind. Um, the the toughest thing is to accept that there are parts of you that are the depression talking and there are parts of you that is you talking uh, so when i was in recovery there used to be times when i used to be like uh, what will these people do they can't really help you they can't really do anything they're just trying to um, frame you in your way in their way uh, and it took me a lot of training and a lot of practice to understand that this is my depression talking which is trying to just sabotage uh, yeah. all this progress that i have made the saboteurs yeah saboteurs like this so uh, your thoughts aren't always don't always have your best interests in mind yes um, your mind lies to you especially if it's an ill mind so those are some things i keep in mind i agree with him i've been where he was just last year and i al- almost also lost myself by the way in, a, in an almost i did not take any action but the thought was a thousand percent mm-hmm. and thank god i was with somebody and i immediately i don't know what in me arjun message message that person i am feeling suicidal help to the extent i had thought this is the first time i'm saying it because i think now i am uh, beyond the fragility mm-hmm. i'm not strong still but i can i'm beyond the fragility you know so i was going to message somebody take care of my child i'm out I was at that space. Why? Because actually, I was going to heal from there. Mm. The lowest I think comes, and then usse bale pura work chal raha tha mere upar. But that's it had happened just seven eight months ago. Seven eight months ago. Oh my God. So uh, us, that thing that you're saying, ab I can keep those things out. Yeah. Shut up. Right. And the other one, tu bhi zada uchal mat. Don't. Uh, which is emotions or thoughts? They come out now. They uh, you know, ssc sare time chalte nahi. They are not me, bhaiya. तुम मैं नहीं हूँ तुम डांस करो अपना मैं अपना आई कीप राइटिंग आई टेक इट आउट आई जस्ट टेक इट आउट एनी टाइम अ थॉट कम्स आई राइट इट गाली गलोच जो भी आ रहा है राइट इट आई लुक एट इट इन वन आर आई लाइक ओ माई गॉड सो इट कम्स आउट ऑफ यू दैट हेल्प्स मी राइटिंग एंड जर्नलिंग हेल्प्स लाइक ओ माई गॉड यू नो सो येस दैट सो लाइक ही सेट द फर्स्ट थ्री थिंग्स आर दीज इट्स नॉट यू प्लीज इट्स नॉट यू यार नन ऑफ इट इज अस सो इट्स द थॉट्स हेयर राइट हेयर ओके एंड what would you like to tell the family members or the friends immediate like they are struggling what would you want to tell them hmm uh, <clears throat> that is a tough question because in some way i understand the friends who just uh, left in that phase i had as well right and uh, it is difficult to be friends with somebody who is going through clinical depression especially if it's marred by a lot of anger a lot of uh, outbursts um it's your choice about whether you're willing to go through the ride with this person or not um it's okay if you're not ready yep. for that yeah so that's the first thing i'd say uh for the family i'd suggest that i got very lucky that my parents were open to visiting psychiatrists visiting psychologists i know that a lot of other parents are not that open there uh, there's still a lot of stigma in visiting a psychiatrist um please 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 it's always better to take professional help um than to uh, risk things and there's a lot at stake yeah there's a lot at stake. there's a lot at stake yeah. with one person uh, going the, either way you know falling into depression or choosing to heal there's a world of a difference and believe me that affects everything yeah. isn't it true i mean you're flourishing today you're here your parents must be I, I, that'll be another, you know, conversation mm. all together. Maybe I'll get your parents one day to speak. But what they must have gone through, and what they must be feeling today, 
and today uh, i uh, if i can take the liberty on your uh, behalf arjun all the relationships you're going to choose now men women whatever and in whatever form you're so much more equipped yeah hmm. you're so much more equipped to even understand if they are going through something not to heal or to look up but to just understand ki yaar theek hai yaar kuch nahi hota let me help in what or assist in whatever you know to aapne ek ne ye kaam kar ke aapne dekha aapne kya radiate kiya so that's also great yeah. and thank you for that and we are at the end now uh, you're the voice of hope what would be your final message to anybody who's listening i'll just cough a bit <coughs> लोन <laughs> 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 it might lead to losing people that you don't want to lose but uh if the people you're around are making you suffer uh it's better to be alone and happy instead of you know um suffering for the sake of it and finally open up please uh it's it's easy easier said than done but it's also very important so double message meri taraf se yeah and and i would like to add arjun is a psychologist and here's I I also actually might speak to him. It's just that I'm done with the journey. एक तो भैया phase खत्म हुआ है तो अभी थोड़ा सांस लूँगी मैं. And I'm trying to help people, but nevertheless, uh, he is doing this. So if anybody is listening and wondering, हाँ, इस सुनतो लिया कहाँ जाना है? I never do this. By the way, I'm never ever marketing anybody or promoting anybody. I'm against it on voice of silence. But I would like to say, please reach out to Arjun Gupta. uh of course we'll have all details but please reach out if you want to talk you know it's i'm sure online you're available personally you're available right uh please do please do it's a personal endorsement so yeah thank you everybody and thank you arjun thank, thank you so, so much. much thanks